Welcome back everybody. There we are. What are we doing? Well, we're trying to finish up all of the chassis work or um, how can I put this? Everything that, that I need to clear the chassis with and basically uh, set everything up before I pull all the panels off everything it's the reason why I have the light I mean the reason why I have I keep all this up besides sanity because I keep the lights on just because you know what it looks like a rally car I mean it'll it, it basically encourages me to work you know yeah they're, they're kind of dusty but you know they're a rally light um, but the whole thing is is that I need to get the downpipe on and figure out all the clearances there because once I have that all done then we can move this on to the lift and start with the mount or checking the mounts, doing the CV shafts and making sure everything moves correctly, you know. Then we can do this, you know, put the rest of the exhaust on and do the skid plates and then everything comes off and goes on the rotisserie. You know, the engine comes out, the rear end comes out, everything comes out and then I can start putting like the engine. I'll put the engine on the bench with the downpipe, every single thing on it because I know it will fit in here and then I will weld it in place with all the mounts that I set up. So that's pretty much what I want to do and I'll weld it on the bench so it actually looks decent, you know, and then I can trim it all and make it all look nice and, and do all that. But that way I can stick it back in the car. I know it's not going to conflict with anything in the chassis or all the mounts are going to work in the chassis after doing, you know, after working on everything. So, without any further ado, let me finish up the coffee, bring you over to the bench, and let me show you what I got to make the downpipe, and yes, we have more cutting to do. <laughs> of the chassis, not the down, the downpipe is going to be cut, but uh, to make it, but, and also show you what the, um, how I'm going to attach the bottom to, so it's kind of neat. Uh, Alright, let's, uh, let's go over there and figure out what we're doing. Here's what we have to build the downpipe for the car. And I brought one of my turbos down to show you how I screwed up. <laughs> well, it's not how I screwed up. It's just like I've never done eBay turbos before. I bought two eBay turbos because I think they were so cheap. And I bought them because they're just like, wow, this is, this is great. What am I going to use them on? Well, I'm using them on this. <laughs> it's just like, okay, well, I'm going to use it on that one. You know? And one of the things you run into when this is like my first eBay turbo build, um, what it is is that you don't understand the clearances. Now I am see we have what do we have with the kit that I that came for that eBay turbo or which I bought externally because I needed to get a I wanted to do this this is a V band clamp it's a it's an old style wastegate you know typical T3 wastegate what it is is this lever right here bleeds off the the exhaust and bypasses the turbo decreases the boost but it has a V band clamp and my friend used them on his car. And ever since using that, I said, I, I love the things. I love the v band clamps. They're freaking fantastic. I think this is great. A great idea. So that's what I'm going to use. That's, that's only half of the quick release situation. Um, then also with this entire setup, you know, with this comes the wastegate, the wastegate mount, bolts, all that stuff. And I get, my friend donated this. Um, it's a two and a half inch Mandrel 90 bend. And this is what we're going to use for a downpipe. Now, this is the easy part. This is the easy part. This is the hard part. Hmm. Um, what it is, is I am used to not, I'm not used to doing the eBay turbos, like I said, but what it is, I'm used to doing this. This right here, I think I've shown this before. This is a Cosworth turbo. What it is, this is um, quick release because it's slotted. It's group N because it has a 32 millimeter restrictor. This one needs seals, but what it is, is take a look where the wastegate is. It is very, very close to the actual cold side of the turbocharger, and it's very compact. That's what I was kind of expecting with uh, this, <laughs> and it's not it. I'm sitting there looking at it when I got everything, just like, oh, no. So what it is, is that the uh, wastegate is a lot further off the cold side portion of this and the thing is looking at it initially I didn't build enough room in there so I'm gonna have to cut the inner well uh, inner fender well which is not bad I'm probably to expand it out probably about yeah, an inch or so you know because and you probably sitting there going, well why don't you modify this no I'd much rather modify the fender because it's rusty anyway or the inner fender because it's rusty anyway so I could just take it if I have this eBay turbo and it blows up I can take another eBay turbo and just bolt it right on 
no problem. And that's kind of the that's kind of the deal what I want to do it with, you know, because I want it to be easy, and I don't want to make an external wastegate because I don't think it's worth it for this car. The sport, yeah, I think it'll be worth it, but not for this car. That's beside the point. The first thing I got to do is we have to pull the turbocharger off, put all of this garbage on, put it back in, and see where we need where we need to modify the interfender wall, and that way we can just keep going. You know, this is through inexperience of EBA turbos. <laughs> I'm used to this stuff, not to this stuff. <laughs> All right, I, I made my confession. All right, let me, uh, let's go um, pull this off. It's only, gonna, it's gonna take a couple seconds. Pull this off, mark where we're gonna have to do, slice it, push it out, then put the turbocharger in so we can build the downpipe. Here's the turbo, it's all set. What I did is I loosened up all the bolts here and clocked the center section to make sure this oil feed goes straight down. Uh, it comes off really nice. What I also had to do is I had to uh, cut a different slot for the turbo because the Cosworth one, I just didn't realize it because this is the first quick release turbo I've ever done on the 10 valve. What it is, is it clocks to the right. Um, this thing is gonna have to clock to the left, pretty much. So it has to go this way instead of that way. You know, it, it's one of those things where it's just like, ah, oh, shoot, I messed up. But whatever, it's a hundred all, hundred, hundred something dollar turbo, eBay turbo. But it's it's not bad. It does it. It does exactly what I wanted to do. Now I got to tighten up these at least one bolt on these on the on these sections right here, and right here, so nothing moves. Pull it back out. Tighten up all the bolts. Put it back in. Put all the intakes and all that stuff. Tighten it all up. Make sure it's all in there. Then we can build the downpipe. Hopefully that's going to be easier, but um, yeah, this is actually fairly easy and I just have to keep that position for the indentation right for the wastegate actuator down there, exact position. So when I put on the rotisserie, I can weld that in. That's not a big deal. So let me pull, let me tighten up these bolts, pull it back out, then, then put everything back in. Here's the V-band, uh, basically the adapter and the V-band setup on the, on the turbo. All, basically what I, all I want to do is I want to go out about that far because I have to cut off this go out about that far then turn straight down just like the stock downpipe pretty much I'm just trying to keep it as you know how can I put this as far away as, as this as possible but I also have to keep it away from the steering rod end so which means it's going to be pretty much right there all the way down and I'm going to show you here in just a bit the reason why I'm doing it this way but the first thing is seeing how it's going to be right there how far out do I have to go? Kind of looks like I have to take about an inch off of this and that should give me just enough to where I'm going to be equidistant in between the engine and the tie rods. At least that's what I'm hoping. So let me just get my uh, cutters and I will cut this and see what happens.
All right, here's my hillbilly downpipe. What it is, it's got the V-band clamp on it. Plenty of airspace right here. Uh, I don't know, see this section right here? I was thinking about putting a mount that goes up to this to hold the back portion of this uh, downpipe and to kind of support the rear of the turbocharger. I might do it off of the wastegate, I'm not really sure, or the uh, back portion of it and go to the manifold. I don't really know. I don't want to, I do want to support the rear of the turbocharger. But as you can see, this is going to be a straight down. It's going to be a slip joint. Now, let me bring you up to the Escort, my rally car. Let me show you what they did. It's exactly what I'm going to do because I thought it was an ingenious idea and it's a quick release solution and it's wicked cool. I really like it. And then we're gonna get this thing, I'm gonna take a walk around, make sure everything was okay on the car, that I don't need to, you know, anything that modifica modifications to the chassis to make work um, that would be hard on the rotisserie or on the lift. So first things first, let me bring you up, show you the Escort and show you how they did that and then I'll take a walk around and we're gonna roll this thing onto the lift, lift it up and start fixing, figuring out if all the suspension I put in those places is correct. Then again, I'm assuming it's not. <laughs> so, all right, let's get this thing going. Here's a turbocharger for the Cosworth. Three bolts, standard, integrated wastegate, catalytic converter. Down there is the spring that goes onto the crossover pipe that goes into the center pipe. Let me, uh, let's go underneath the car. Let me show you exactly what it is. Here is the, uh, basically what it, basically a crossover pipe, if you want to call it. Take a look at the spring. The spring is like, you know, you generally use to see them on like boot lids or trunks or whatever you want to call them, uh, you know, to keep the hatches down. And the whole thing is, I've never seen one on an exhaust, but oh my God, does it work slick. And this is why I'm going to use it, because people who know a lot more than me did this, and I'm going to co just copy them, because, you know what, they're a bunch of smart bastards, you know, <laughs> and I'm just a dumb hillbilly. So, you know what, if they did that, and it works so great, you can take the two bolts off the crossover pipe, pop the spring, and it pulls right out. Or, you pop the spring, the three bolts off the uh, turbocharger for the downpipe, pulls right out really fast. It is an awesome way to do it, and then keeps um, tension on the slip joint and the thing is when it's on the slip joint and it keeps tension what happens is when it heats up it seals it so it's fantastic absolutely fantastic these guys over in England man they know what the hell they're doing so let's run back down to the car and let's see if we can get um, how can I say this see if we can find anything else that we need to weld onto it before we have to put it on the lift which will be easier on the dolly than on the lift all right okay well let's run back down well, I found my first thing that I have to weld in prior to me putting it on the lift. Remember this. This is the power steering mill. I put it over here, and I welded it, and I still got the tack here, and it fit right there. And what it is, is that this thing was up, and I had, you know, it's a really good, you know, distance above the pump. Great, you know, because at least six, six, seven inches above the actual line of the pump. And what happens is I put the hood down, it was fine. Then when I slammed the hood, it actually knocks it off. So it's about an inch, an inch too high. And which I can easily afford to lower it. But looking at this, this mount right here, I went down and says, if I lowered it about an inch, it's like, oh man, how am I gonna do this? So then I went to my box of mount to see what I had. And of course, <laughs> I had a mount that looks like that looks like the back of this. And I'm sitting going, cheats. I never seen that as a power steering mount. I wonder where that came from. Well, let's, well, let's see if it fits. Well, it fits. <laughs> it fits great. And I'm sitting going, great. I wonder where that came from. And I looked over here and I said, well, it's a windshield washer bottle mount. <laughs> it's the same thing, basically. And if I put this in here and I have this section right to the bottom of the uh, frame rail right here or the sock chassis rail, if I go like this, it fits absolutely perfect and it's about an inch down. Because this the other one was up like this. This will be down like that. And I can still, still retrieve it, um, you know, turn things and, and get it out and all this other stuff. And it's still at least five inches above the pump over there. What I gotta do, I'm gonna get my stuff on, clean this up, tack this in really good, and then I'm gonna go around and see if there's anything else I need to do before we throw it on the lift.
This right here is the last thing I found before we put it on the lift. What is it? It's a fuel filler. I didn't show this because I forgot. <laughs> I forgot to do it. What I did was I just welded up a piece of pipe, uh, aluminum pipe onto this. All it is, it goes in there, and that's where it goes. And this is angled so that the uh, trunk lid should clear. If I have to bring it down like that, I have to bring it down like that. But it, you know, the trunk lid goes up and over like this, and it should be fine. I mean, I can always shorten the pipe, move it in. But what I do is I want to situate what the mounts I want right now in. Here, let me show you what I got. It's just, you know, it's more recycling. I figured, you know what? I looked at them going, yeah, I'm going to give that a shot. <laughs> let me show you what I got. This is what I got to recycle. What is it? Well, it's a steering column from a B3 Passat. I couldn't get it out because what they want you to do, take a look at these bolts right here. Right here is what they call a shear head bolt. They put it like, I think it was, I forgot what it was, a 13 maybe or whatever it is. But you, you screw it in there and it shears it off. And that's, you know, that's A, correct torque, and B, so they can't steal the car. It's kind of a big thing. And, but look at the uh, size of the nut certs in the back. They're really huge. And they're M8, so it's going to work perfect for that. I'm going to use this portion of the steering column for something else, for another project. That's kind of the reason why I'm, <laughs> I'm doing this. i got to do it anyway. You know, so if I got to do it anyway, look, I got all this extra metal. I can, I can bring down the mounts. I can do all that stuff and it'll look kind of cool. You know, um, at least I think it will. So what I got to do is I got to slice these bolts and either use a, uh, an impact to uh, pull them off or a regular screwdriver. Sometimes a regular screwdriver will do it. Sometimes it won't, but it is what it is. So let's go over here to the bench. Let me, um, slice this with the die grinder and, or the whiz wheel. Pull these things out, and then we got ourselves a mounting plate for this. <laughs> See, just cutting a slot in it for the screwdriver. What I have to do. These things are kind of rusty, so they were really hard to get out. But I used my impactor, um, my sludge impactor. I don't know why you call it. I forgot. You know, and this is a screwdriver tip bit to get it free. Generally, you can just put a screwdriver like this. This is a snap-on one with a wrench. 13 inch goes or a half inch goes right here, and generally it'll pull it out. This one it wouldn't do it, so I had to cut a slot big enough. In order for the screwdriver to fit, pop it out. And now, cut this down the center and we have mounts that go on there. All right, we're here at the filler neck. Like I showed you before, just a pipe welded on. We have a decline, not as much as I'd like, you know, but beggars can't be choosers because we're under a lot of confines with what we have uh, for space wise, especially in this, you know, in the G Coupe GT uh, Quattro form. Now, you're probably wondering why I cut up those mounts on the uh, steering column. A, I needed to get them off anyway. So that was a thing that I was going to have to do. Second, if you have the mounts like this and you sit there and you just, Put that in like that. <laughs> they virtually fit. <laughs> it's just like, you know, that is kind of cool. <laughs> so um, I'm looking at it going, okay, yeah, I might have to trim a little bit down here. I'll definitely have to trim up here, trim over here, and bring it in, and then figure out exactly where I need to bend it to actually contact it. But it does this thing does the same thing over here. So all I have to do is cut the side off, make this flat surface area. Same thing with this. Cut this flat, cut this surface area off, make it flat. That way, it'll it'll go right in, you know, and it'll look actually factory and it'll be friggin' stiff. This thing, you know, just say you drop a you drop a can on it, you know, by accident. This won't pull out. So, all right, let me uh, get my stuff back on, start trimming and pounding this out, and seeing how I can make this all work.
Now that that mount's done, I'm going to let it cool down just a little bit. I can get most of it now when I flip the car over with on the rotisserie. I can get the stuff in back so I don't have to crawl underneath there. Uh, this is all blocked off, remember. Um, what it is, is now that we got that done, time to put move it on the lift and start pulling the CV. Actually, I'll probably do the exhaust and I'll pull the CV joints. But you're probably wondering what I use for bolts. More of the Ford van bolts, what it is. They're eight by 125 or M8 standard fixed thread, but 10 millimeter head. And they have a floating washer on it. I think that's gonna work out pretty well. So I can use a 10 millimeter for just about everything back here. <laughs> that's, what I'm try that's what I'm trying to do. Universal, universal, you know? So, um, but that's the only thing. So let's, uh, um, let, I'm gonna have to get most of this stuff out of here, put it over to the bank, then we're gonna roll it onto the lift, lift her up, and we'll start doing the exhaust. Well, car looks pretty cool underneath. <laughs> I love the header. <laughs> oh, and everything you can get on all the bolts. You can, you can get sockets on every single bolt. It, it's not obstructed. I love it. Um, okay, what it is. Like I said, here's the downpipe. I was gonna do the I was gonna do the exhaust, but I changed my mind just in case. I have to do the main things I have to do is the exhaust to get to where the mounts are going to be for the best placement on how I'm gonna do things and to make sure the CV joints don't bind up and down when I use my alignment strut to make sure everything works correctly. Now, if I do something in the back and I accidentally put a mount where I don't want it to be, I'm sitting there going, all right, and I have to move the suspension somewhere in or out or whatever, and it just doesn't, and I, let's just say if I have to cut the mount out, I just don't want to do that. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to do all the, the suspension. I'm going to make sure I'm going to pull apart every single CV joint, I'm basically gonna you know, do that motorsport trick that I told you or that I did on the Sport Quattro. You know, I'll show you a little bit more, I'll probably show a little bit more close up than I did in the Sport Quattro, but um, just to show you how to free up a little bit of horsepower and just less rolling resistance basically in the shafts is all it is. You know, you're just decreasing the binding portion of it. So what it is, is first things first, I'm gonna drop the car, start pulling the CV shafts and, CV shafts and cleaning them. I'm just going to cut it. We're going to go right to where it's going to be. I'm going to have one of the CV shafts on the table. I'm going to show you how the uh, or how I blueprint, basically blueprint the um, CV shafts so they're nice and you know wobbly and no binding and frees up horsepower. You know, but first things first. Let me drop the car, start pulling the CV shafts, and we will cut right to uh, me bringing these things on the bench after they're cleaned. Here we are through the magic of YouTube. All the CV shafts are out, all clean. Um, pretty much, just a. It's gonna take you a couple hours. Just messy, you know. Uh, that's that's. There's no way around it, you know. So, but what are we doing? When I said, um, you'll probably see in the description that I said I'm gonna blueprint the uh, CV shafts. Well, it's not really. I'm just making that word up. <laughs> I mean, what I'm doing. Here is the cage. This cage right here is basically forged and stamped through uh, pretty much. And it's kind of, it's, it's, if you take a real good look, I'm not sure if I can put this out here. Take a real good look. See how rough that is? That is, um, we're trying to get rid of that roughness. And why is that? You know, um, because when you sit here and you have this, this ball like this, it goes like that and you have to force it through in order to, um, you know, push it into the cage. Well, I'm going to get rid of that. And what does that do for us? Well, when you don't have a lot of money for a motor, <laughs> or if you're in a spec series, the reason why I am doing this is because I think I said about it in my, in the video with the Sport Quattro when I did it on this, is that, you know, in the first iteration of the Fiesta rally packs or rally kits, if you want to call them, that M Sport put out back in the early 2000s, one of the things they had was, you know, motorsport drive shafts. And I asked, you know, um, a friend of mine, said, you know, what is that motorsport drive shaft? Because, you know, they wanted 250 quid for just the drive shafts. And I'm, and I, and I says, oh, are they all special, like the special, you know, ones that the, you know, that, that Audi put out and just, you know, and you had to use these special joints and it's all this special stuff and custom forged, blah, blah, you know? And he says, no, 
pieces. All it is is they, they, what they did is they take apart every single CV shaft and they clean up all of the ridges. What does that do? Well, it decreases the amount of parasitic drag, drag that's caused just by rotating the actual assembly. Um, and pretty much it's, they reduce that to an absolute minimum because every single car out there had to have a spec motor, 150 horsepower, I think it was, and that was it. But in order for you to gain an advantage on someone else, well, you reduce the parasitic drag, so that motor is actually more efficient in translating the power from the crankshaft to the actual ground. You know, so with less drag happening, you know, throughout the entire system, the faster the car will go for the same amount of horsepower. And that's kind of what we're doing here. And seeing how I'm not gonna have a big expensive motor in here, I'm just gonna have a, a junk motor that, or a parts motor that I'm gonna throw together. I mean, in the final iteration, I have an old Ur Quattro uh, bottom end and a uh, cylinder head with an old Schrick cam, and it's gonna be kind of cool. But I'm gonna use the normally aspirated ones to sort out the injection system first, because I don't wanna blow that one up, I wanna blow up these. So that's. That's down the road, that's down the road. Um, but <laughs> what am I doing now? Oh, also, one thing I found out, seeing how this is such a parts bin, um, this right here is a, this is the old style cage. Whoop. See if they get stuck inside there. Uh, this is the old style cage, which is like a rectangle. And this one is like a modified figure eight. And I looked at this going, huh, isn't it? Cause this CV joint was easy to get out. And I looked at it going, well, no restriction. So if you find these CV cages, you don't have to do very little work. There is a little bit of restriction here and there, very minor. I'll clean that up with, with what uh, the die grinder. Straight $10 die grinder with a carbide bit. That's all you, all you have to use. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend the next couple hours cleaning up every single one of these things. Um, one thing I do suggest is wear rubber gloves because the filings come off, they embed into your hand, and they're kind of a bitch to get out. <laughs> it's just like, ugh, all right, you know? Um, but that's beside the point. Uh, let me get onto this so we can put all these shafts back in there and we can test the suspension. Hopefully I'll have this done by the end of the day because it does take a lot of time you don't want to take too much metal off. I want it just enough so that, so the ball slides in here with no restriction whatsoever you know and goes through and so I have no restriction on any of the CV joints but that takes time and this is and if you don't have the money to go fast well take the time to utilize what you have to um, to the best of its ability that's the basic basic faction you know and every if you're racing and you don't have you know ten dollars for a die grinder and five dollars for a, bit, a used bit because that's I mean I bought that in a whole box of bits for like ten dollars off the of eBay um, you know it's just like then you know, you know then don't race <laughs> but if you want to if you want to race this is what you got to do and nobody ever told me this until I got into the Ford it's the reason why I like Ford so much you know but I started with Audis that's kind of you know a big thing of mine and that's why I like these cars and I keep looking underneath that car and the rust work is gonna take some time. <laughs> but that's beside the point. Let me get this done. Let me clean up all these things. And then when you come back, I'll do a couple shots of going through it, but um, that's pretty much all I'm gonna be doing because I did this all on the Sport Quattro and you'll see what I did on the Sport Quattro. But let me get this done. We'll come back and we'll, after I put all these uh, CV shafts and all the stuff back in the car, you know, lock them in, then we're gonna figure everything out, so. All right, let me get on to this so we can get on with the video. Here is the cage. Take a look how tough it is, basically. What it is, is that these things are, you know, this was, you know, it looks like it was stamped out. It wasn't cut out. If you take the ball bearing, you put it right here, it takes a lot of force to get there. So I'm gonna try and relieve this whole thing so this thing slides in and back. And there's a place over here, there's one over here you can see, the ball bearing has worn it through. So the ball bearing requires less, less force to push through. It does require force. And this one over here requires even less force. But then you go back to this one, it requires the most force. So let's clean this all up and I'll show you um, what the finished product looked like. 
that way we can get all the things things squared away and i think you'll like the process like the end the end result i mean all right let's just do that here's the finished product right here the ball bearing goes inside on every one very little play you know it's just minute if any but every single one smooth it doesn't you know you get the ball bearings will move all around without no restriction that's what i want another thing after you grind this out you saw me taking just a little bit of burr or deburring it around here because whenever you you cut it flat like this it'll leave edges so you got to clean these up so when you put the cage inside here it moves freely and doesn't bind up sometimes around here as you can see there's kind of witness marks right there sometimes it binds up i kind of clean that up but i'll use a hand file for that so let me um basically just let's just put this thing all back together again and i can start doing all the other cv joints but i just wanted to show you this final thing just because you know i forgot to tell you about deburring it and uh just in case this center section needs to be cut down a little bit use a hand file but some of them will, might need it, some of them might not. But all I know is it's close, but there's no restriction. So that's the big thing. Let me put this all together, or let me um, uh, start putting these things, uh, or doing the rest of these things. Let me start rambling and do the rest of these, and we can get this thing all squared away. So this is the last one, but I just wanted to show you, this is what it ends up after I polish it on the lathe. Um, I just can't show it to you because I don't want anybody who uh, chopped their finger off, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> um, but just to let you know, this is also one of the things. The main thing is when you get everything in there, you just want to get rid of all the you know restrictions. Yes, I can polish the actual grooves in the CV joints, but I'm not going to go that far. The main thing is that I just get it. You know, everything's free working and and pretty nice. You know, just pretty decent. So. Uh, that's about it. Let me uh, put this back together. We'll throw it on the car, then we'll go measure the suspension. Well, there's zero camber. Let's uh, check the inner CV joint, see if it's out. If we have to move it, we have there to move it. There is the middle of the inner CV joint. Well, let's see how much room that we have to... Uh, make in order to make this thing actually work here is this uh cv shaft this right here this stop goes right to here if we push that in like that that's where it has to go so let me put this back in the center of where i want it to be on the cv joint let's see how far that we have to go backwards in order to get it so what i'm going to do is this right here is the flat spot where this rests on so I go like this, there, that's the exact, what do we have to do? It looks like huh, 20 millimeters exactly. Yeah, 20 millimeters exactly. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my cutters out. I'm just gonna cut the uh, mounts and move them back. That's it. I think that's the easiest way to do it. All right, let me go get my stuff on and we'll do it. All right, that's exactly where I want it to be and exactly where I want this to be. All right, I'm just going to go out and just do the rest of them. Um, I got to weld this plate in, but I'm not going to do it right yet because the whole thing is I got to pull a CV joint out. I got to drill the rest of this hole, but I have the place where it's going to work. That's the main thing. Now that I have where it's going to work, all right, I might just trim up a little bit and throw that plate in there just to leave it there. But other than that, let's go. I'm going to, you know what? I'm just going to go to do the rest of them when we're done. Just make this episode shorter. <laughs> All right. Because I 
way too long-winded. But the main thing is, at rest, that is exactly where I want it to be. This is exactly where I want it to be, and I'm good. And it's straight up and down. Well, <laughs> it's better to be lucky than good. What happened was I came back here to film cutting up all of this. And I put the uh, suspension, on the, I put the CV shafts on and they were way out. That one was like all the way in and hitting the differential. This one was all the way out and, and was pulling the balls out of the cage, out of the inner, inner CV joint. Oh, another thing, um, when you clean up all the cages, you're going to have to put limiters on them or just be very careful putting them in because seeing how, I mean, there's no play in the cages, but they're so, you know, they're so free and loose, they will actually pop the balls out if it's, uh, the ball bearings out of it if it's, uh, uh, if, you, if there's too much of an angle. And it is a royal pain in the ass to put them back together again. So I'm going to probably make limiters and try and figure out something, but that'll be later. What it is now is I, I didn't put the strut on this thing. I just said, okay, well, I'm going to bring this thing up, put it roughly where it's supposed to be, use my camber gauge, and see exactly where the camber actually sits out. So if I can put it right here, that's, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this, but the bubble goes into the negative, I mean, into the zero portion. That's zero uh, negative camber. And I look at it, both CV joints were in their exact good position. And the funny thing was when I, when I swapped them out, it was just like, all right, that one over there worked, but this one I couldn't get to work. And then I, I jacked it up, put this in going, oh my God, it works. They both, it saves me all this time. So what am I going to do? I'm going to do the exhaust. <laughs> I'm, I'm, this is crazy because I only had to do the fronts, you know? And um, yeah, so the thing is, if you actually have your cars and you set it to the CV shafts, which I did, and I did it wrong, um, and I swapped the CV shafts, and there's uh, CV shafts, and it's better to be lucky than good, because, oh my God, they work now. <laughs> oh, great. All right, um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go grab all the exhaust bits and pieces, and I'm gonna start making the exhaust for the uh, for this car, so we can get this, get this episode wrapped up, and I can get this thing on the rotisserie because I keep looking underneath there, the amount of rust that I have to work on and all the stuff I have to do to this thing is crazy, you know? But, yeah, I signed up for it. <laughs> so I, no pity shall be allowed. <laughs> all right, all right, let me go, let me um, go grab the exhaust and uh, bits and pieces. I'll throw it out on the floor and I'll just try and make something up.